Now let's talk about what I think is probably going to be the biggest movie of the year 2023, and that is the Super Mario Brothers movie coming from uh, Universal and uh, Illumina and Illumination, to be more specific. Um, I'm not going to read this entire article, but um, the Super Mario Brothers movie is leveling up to a $225 million plus global bow, possibly year's best so far bo box, box office preview. I don't think that I don't think that they're incorrect when they are making the, this claim that it's going to open to two hundred twenty five million dollars opening weekend, because what it has going for it is the fact that it is connected to one of the more one of the most popular video game franchises on the planet. It has nothing to do with Chris Pratt, Jack Black, uh, Seth Rogen, uh, Anya Taylor Joy. No, it's the fact that it's tied to super to the Super Mario Brother to the Super Mario Brothers game franchise. So right there, it has a lot going for it. And the difference between this movie and the night th this new Super Mario Brothers movie and the 1993 movie with Bob Hoskins and uh, John Leguizamo is the fact that this is an animation and it does look in it. I don't want to say feels like Super Mario Brothers because again, I haven't seen the movie. The movie is coming out as of the uploading of this video, but it does look like Super. It does look like the. It does look like Super Mario Brothers, uh, and reviews have come out, and the movie reviews are are mixed on on the on this movie. Honestly, I'm not surprised that reviews are mixed because video game adaptations don't. Ten don't tend to review well. I don't think it's some. I I don't personally believe that it's some super duper crackpot conspiracy that you know you have all these critics that are coming out and they are agenda driven to bring this down for the sake of the Walt Disney Company. No, I think what it has to do with is the fact that it's a video game adaptation and you're adapting a video game that has lore going all the way back to 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 nineteen eight to nineteen eighty five. Right. So you're going to get so you're going to get a lot, a lot of criticism from that front. And more preferably is like, well, well, you ignore this aspect of Super Mario Land 2 that was canonical. Therefore, therefore, this mo therefore, therefore, this movie is non-canon, blah, 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 blah. It's the same problem that that people run into whenever they whenever they're going to make like a Street Fighter or a Mortal Kombat movie. There is so much lore that they can't that that can't be crammed in to a 90 minute movie but one thing that i will agree with um with with the critics is uh is them basically coming after seth rogan this article from kotaku uh super mario brothers movie fans knock seth, seth rogan for barely trying now i'm about to play the the tiktok clip i don't think this is from his official account but he basically goes over his quote-unquote inspiration for the voice of donkey kong i was very clear i don't do voices and if you want me to be in this movie he's gonna sound like me and that's it <laughs> um and that was the beginning and end of that conversation <laughs> um i was like if you want donkey kong to sound a lot like me i'm your guy um but it did seem to work you know i think in the film and in the game like i think all you really know about donkey kong is that he throws barrels and he does not like mario very much and i think like that's honestly like that's kind of what i ran with Right. He basically admits that, well, I don't want to really alter my voice. I just want to come in and say and say my lines and ju and ju and just and just go home. Right. Um, and if we go over here, this actually this all these images are, co are coming from Twitter uh, with this post. I'm sorry, but all the Mario, all, but all the Mario movie actors wearing these awesome clothes for the premiere based on their characters. And then Seth Rogen just not even trying. So we see the first picture right here. I'm going to splash up on the screen. You get Chris Pratt and Charlie Day, right? They, they, they're not, they don't dress exactly like Mario and Luigi, but it's very reminiscent of Mario and Luigi with Chris Pratt wearing the red suit and uh, Charlie Day wearing green. Then you get over to Jack Black and Jack Black, this is actually really cool, is uh, he has Bowser spines on the back of his suit jacket. Right, that's a, that's actually really that's actually really really cool. Then you have Anya Taylor Joy that is kind of reminiscent of Peach, but 
almost like almost like an alternate outfit for Smash Brothers. If you know, I know Peach is in Smash Brothers, but if there was ever any like alternate outfits for Peach in Super Smash Brothers, I would imagine that would be one of the alternate outfits. And then here's just Seth Rogen, just cat, just casual suit, more of like a whatever. And some people on Twitter are bringing up in the comments that all Seth Rogen really needed to do was wear a brown suit with a red tie to be more reminiscent of Donkey Kong. And they're not wrong. When, they're not they're not wrong in their assertion, right? Look at all the look at all these other voice actors that are really going out of their way to dress very reminiscent of the characters that they voice in the movie. And then Seth Rogen just shows up as Seth Rogen. But one thing that I'm really looking forward to in, in this movie is the fact that they are actually going to bring Donkey Kong out to the DK rap. Now, for those of you that don't know what the DK rap is, which, um, some, which some of you might know it, some of you might not, uh, here is the DK rap in its entirety, in all of its glory. referred to as one of the worst rap songs of all time it's it, it for me it's 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 a it's so bad it's good but the the real mean and potatoes of this uh comes from a hollywood reporter article that came out on on the 2nd of april of 2023 uh chris pratt promises quote unquote your childhood is firmly intact with the super mario brothers movie um, bu -bu 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 -bum. let me scroll down here. Uh, Chris Pratt is saying, it's a me, Mario. 
and Wang on the response to him voicing the iconic video game character in the Super Mario Brothers movie. Quote, it makes sense. I was pretty nervous when they offered it to me. I thought, wow, let's not screw this up. Pratt told The Hollywood Reporter of the fan investment in his voice performance at the film's LA premiere on Saturday. Uh, quote, that's where that's where it all comes from, I think. People are passionate about this character and they've probably seen some of their some of their favorite IP getting screwed up. It's kind of a cynical business. People make movies just because a title has reach. He's not wrong when he ma when he makes that assertion, right? How many how many times has something come out uh, has, you know, a movie come out that's been based on something prior and they screw it up and they screw it up so badly and then they and then they always come out and they always say, well, it, well, it's the fans fault for not embracing it. it, it you know, it, it's not that we made a bad movie. No, 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 no. We have to shield ourselves from from any and all criticism, no matter how legitimate. So let's push all of the blame onto the fan base if the if this if this movie doesn't work. But here we go. Um, Chris Pratt continues, quote, I saw it with the Lego movie. I was like, how are you going to make a movie about Legos? What is that? And then Chris Miller and Phil Lord ma made this incredible movie. I was part of it. I loved it, he continued. So it's a big challenge. Just because something has reach doesn't mean it's going to be a good movie. And there's instances of people making bad movies and ruining people's childhoods. So the pressure w was on to not do that. And thankfully, we didn't. I think the movie is fantastic. And I think your childhood is firmly intact. So... Once again, instead of taking the standard Hollywood approach of blame the fan base for not embracing it and going like full, full blown, um, what's his nuts? Uh, Billy Eichner. I was about to say the guy who did bros, right? Where he blamed, where he blamed like all of the, all of the straight white dudes for not going out and seeing his gay rom-com, despite the fact that rom-coms overwhelmingly have usually cater to a female audience. No guy likes going to rom-coms, right? If you're a guy and you're listening to this, you know, you, you don't, you don't want to watch Titanic, but if the girlfriend or the wife wants to watch Titanic, guess what? You're losing that fight and your ass is watching Titanic, whether you, whether you like it or not. So again, what, like, what was Billy Eichner thinking making a gay rom-com so women are not going to go see it men are not going to go see it because men hate rom-coms who the hell was who the hell was bros made for so again and this is this is where i i praise chris pratt is that he's not taking the standard hollywood approach now there there's a lot of word salad but if you break if you break down his statement in into into pure english is basically you know of I understand your concern, but please give the movie a chance. Best thing, best thing that could honestly have happened to this movie. Again, I have not seen it. It is coming out um, as of the uploading of this video, so there was no way for me to see it before before I before I recorded it. I do think it's going to do well opening weekend, but um, we're going to have to wait to see how it does how it does you know how it does in the second weekend because, like I said. Critic scores ultimately mean nothing for for a for a movie like this. So um, yeah, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and end this segment right here. Uh, we're just gonna have to wait and see what the word of mouth is and how the second weekend uh, how the second how their uh, second weekend box office is uh, is gonna do.